The first week of the season is here. It's what we've all been waiting for. Let's get into it all right now. Our Locked On Cubs, your daily Chicago Cubs podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Alongside Sam Olber, I'm Matt Cozy, and this is Lockdown Cubs, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. Please support the show and be a part of the Lockdown Cubs community by following and subscribing on all audio platforms. And you can watch, subscribe, and leave a comment on YouTube. Thanks so much for making us your first listen. Sam and I are lifelong fans, taking our passion into a discussion with you on all things Cubs. Today's Monday episode is brought to you by Ultimate Baseball GM. Ever dreamed of becoming an MLB GM and managing your baseball franchise? Then this game is definitely for you. To download Ultimate Baseball GM, just visit ultimatebaseballgm.com or look it up in your app store. Listeners get a 100% free boost to their franchise when using the promo locked on in the game. Oh, my goodness. Opening day is three days away. So excited to be with you this week. We're going to be have a packed week of episodes for you, including live shows at 7 p.m. Tuesday, 5 p.m. Thursday, and after the final out on Saturday, as opening week is here. Sam, hope all is well over by you, and baseball games will be played this week. Uh, Look, before we get into the show, here's what I want to say. As much as I enjoy breaking down the roster, talking about what might happen, talking about Derek in his basement having the Cubs 21st on every single thing, talking about you know every projection out there this is what it's about matthew this week there's real baseball games being played and all that stuff all that talk becomes moot it does not matter anymore it is about what happens you could take the computers and throw them out the balcony window because the real results are going to be happening live on tv put away your phone look up Go to a ball game. It's time, okay? And I I expect our listeners, I expect you, and of course I expect myself to elevate themselves and lock in. Tell your significant other for the next six months on Saturdays and Sundays at home games, we will not be doing anything from 1.20 to 4 p.m., okay? If you want to go out, we'll go out with the girls after the ball game, okay? Friday night in St. Louis, we're going to do some sort of day event because I got to be home by 7.10, that's what I expect, and I want to see. It's go time now, okay? And and the last thing I'll say is everybody always says accurately in the game, one of the great baseball cliches, that's true. You cannot win a division. You cannot win a pennant in April, but you can lose one. So we, as we've talked about all year, need to lock in every single game in April, and of course, Mar- you know, the, the first, the last game in March, and make sure that we stay afloat early, play competitive baseball, and bring it to you every single day. It's go time. I feel like a prize fighter waking up on a Monday morning before a Saturday night uh, he- heavyweight fight. It's go time. It certainly is that, and we're going to go over the April schedule, at least the first few series, uh, during a segment at some point this week. And a player that's going to be back in April, it looks like the chances are increasing, is Seiya Suzuki, Sam. Uh, The Cubs outfielder has made a lot of progress, especially over the last week. First it was throwing, Uh, Then it was dry swings, then front toss, and now on-field BP on Saturday. And according to the athletic Sahadev Sharma, with this type of progression, optimism has grown regarding Suzuki's return. Quote, while it was once thought that a good outcome would be late April, a source suggests that by the middle of April is pretty realistic, end quote. It's exciting because we know he's going to be an impact bat. You know, we're still evaluating those prospects and want to see him 
you know, provide a thump in, in, in the middle of the order for, for the Northsiders. And certainly this is going to have some roster implications, or it could. And we're going to get to that uh, later in the show as well. I'm excited because I still remember when the oblique injury broke and, um, you know, we, we were pretty set that it was, it was one of the worst case scenarios. He was going to have to miss uh, time. We right. thought it was going to be six to eight weeks. Turns out it might be closer to six, uh, kind of that earlier part of the timeline. But the way this has gone in spring training, you've seen the obvious hole that Suzuki created in right. And if that hole could be filled by April, you know, middle of April, and I'll, I'll float an, a date out in a minute or two, that's huge for this team. Yeah. Um, originally, I was thinking May 1st, like you said, right. and, and Sahadev was, was supported that. And now we're, 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 we're targeting mid-April. I think the takeaway here is, and, and this is why I'm a little bit higher on Suzuki than I think you are, is like he cares. And so it's like he's not one of these guys that that's injured. He wants to come back. He wants to come back as soon as possible. It's obvious that he cares and, and really wants to be great. And so, you know, I think I think he's put in the work. I think he's really kind of convinced the Cubs staff, hey, I, I, I'm done being this kind of test dummy of, hey, we just want to make sure you're 100%. Like I, I, the kid gloves need to be taken off. And, and if I feel like I'm able to play, then, then let's get this thing going. Um, so it's encouraging. Hopefully April 15th, we'll, we'll, we'll move that up to the new target date uh, and see if he can get going early and come in and, and have an impact start. Hopefully this Nico Horner thing is precautionary as well because the, these are the two guys, right? Seiya Suzuki and Nico Horner, we've highlighted them all off season. Probably, I would say, you know, the two of the most important guys, but not only because of their talent, but because of their struggles with their health. Obviously, Suzuki's just had one season. Horner's had a couple uh, uh, interrupted seasons. We need these guys to stay healthy. Obviously, Horner will be in the opening day lineup. It sounds nothing serious. Very good news on Suzuki, uh, and and hopefully he could come in. And you know that, that oblique has to be a hundred percent, right? Because he's going to be swinging in the cold, running in the cold. So you know you want to make sure that that's fully healed before he comes back. But I'm all for you know not having this be one of those injuries where you know, we say he's week to week and you look up and it's May 7th and he's still not back yet. So, uh, excited about that. And, and, and overall outside of the Horner bicep thing, it was a very positive weekend. I thought I watched every inning of every game and, um, good stuff. Good stuff. Yeah. We're going to get to that to close out today's program. So six weeks, from the injury is Saturday, April 8th, when the Cubs will be in the second game of their series, hosting the Texas Rangers. Yeah. And you just brought up April 15th, and you're you're basically right on because uh, Sahadev speculates the Cubs could be extra cautious and have Suzuki avoid playing in what would be likely cold Wrigley conditions. So, so what, wait a second. Let me interrupt yeah. you for a minute. Okay. Are you saying there's a good chance he may debut in the city of angels when I'm in attendance Friday, April 14th, I'll be at that ball game West coast trip. And you, I forgot about that. So yeah. You might be at Suki's first game at 23. I'll be there Friday, April 14th. And I'll be, I'll, I'll be there Saturday, April 15th as well. I'll be catching two Cubs Dodgers evening tilts. Oh man, that's incredible stuff. Yeah, it's gonna be really exhilarating. Wow, I'm I am uh jealous of that. There's there's an outside chance I catch the game Sunday, but I think I'm gonna be on a plane. Okay, well that that would make a difference. So yeah, I could delay it, but I gotta get back. Sure. So Friday, April 14th, when they start the West Coast trip would be fantastic. Oh I do think this is having uh, some roster effects, uh, which we're going to get to in a couple of minutes uh, here. So, and, and you got to think when Suzuki comes back, Sam, yeah. it's it's three, four, five in the order, right? Absolutely. And and, and that West Coast trip makes sense because I think they, they travel to the Oakland Coliseum after that. It's long. Yeah, it's a long run. Yeah, so, so you, you get him to debut in, in, in places that he's comfortable and – yeah. Oh, yeah. Three, four, five in the order. I guess technically maybe two, maybe two. 
Uh, right. Maybe he leads off versus lefties if we can't if, if Horner's struggling because by the time he comes back, we'll have a very small sample on what's working and what isn't. Or if Nico Horner's hit, you know, on base percentage is two thirty five, maybe you, you flip those guys and let Suzuki hit lead off because I've I've talked about that way earlier on this show. I think he's a really good natural fit in the leadoff hole with his approach. Uh, but yeah, I mean, he he instantly comes in the lineup and he's instantly you know one of if not their best offensive player. Coming up next, we get to our final opening day roster projection. Stay tuned. Today's episode is brought to you by Ultimate Pro Baseball GM. This is the coolest game we've played in a long time. As you can tell by my roster projections, I put on my MLB GM hat about two or three times a week. As it turns out, playing this game, it's actually not all that Easy. The game allows you to manage every strategic aspect of a franchise, playing through seasons and leading your team and fans to glory as you build a historic dynasty. In the game, you're responsible for hiring the right coaches and staff, scouting and drafting players, and navigating your team through free agency and all the ups and downs of a season. This is all in a challenging and realistic game world of Ultimate Baseball GM, which is completely free and playable offline, playable on the go as you want, and when you want to. All the Locked On MLB hosts are right now competing against each other for some uh, good-natured competition. We'll see who wins that battle, uh, but I would encourage you uh, to join us there as well. Locked On Cubs listeners get a 100% free boost to their franchise when using the promo Locked On in the game store. So make sure to check it out. To download the game, just visit probaseballgm.com, scan the code, or look it up in the Apple and Google Play stores. probaseballgm.com, and start your dynasty today with Ultimate Baseball GM. Welcome back to Locked On Cubs. Thanks for making us your first listen every day. And we do have the final opening day roster projection right here. And we're going to start on the right side, uh, which is the positional side, Sam. Mm -hmm. And then we'll make our way back uh, to the pitchers, including uh, the bullpen. So if Saya is going to be back on April 14th, um, you know, you're, you're probably not going to burn a 40 man spot for Mike Talkman anymore. Uh, Mike Talkman has cooled off dramatically. He does offer some profiles that are good. Um, but even if he does make the team for Thursday, he's not going to start anymore. I think you're going to see a rotation of Mancini, Wisdom, and, uh, you know, to hold down right field for the first couple of weeks or, or you know, first two, three weeks. Uh, right now, the, the spots that I have – that were originally taken at one time by Madrigal and McKinstry, uh, and then it was later Bodie and, and Master Boney, is now Master Boney and Morell. Uh, Morell's had a terrific spring, especially lately. Um, offers good power, good versatility. He, he could back up uh, center field if, if necessary, as we've talked about before. He could play all three outfield spots. You know, he's playing right field as we record uh, today and his best infield spot is probably second but obviously we know he could play third and short as well um, so he's on the team now and I, I do think that's going to happen uh, there's absolutely no reason for Zach McKinstry to make it you know if he didn't make it over Bodie who didn't have a 40-man spot he shouldn't make it over somebody that also has a 40-man spot uh, in Miles Mastro so McKinstry literally has like three or four hits this spring um, I just don't see how that benefits the team, despite his versatility, despite his speed. I think it's better in other places. Listen, I could play. I could play every position and hit 140. <laughs> yeah, I mean he's hitting O something. Yeah, I can do that. Um, so I that's really the can. positional side. You know, I think Rios is, no, is a Rios, lock. Rios. So Rios is on this ball club. Yeah. So there's only two spots, and it's going to Mastro and Morell. Um, 
what you know, what do you think? Because there's no magical on here anymore for the second straight projection. What I think is, and we'll have a separate episode on this before Thursday, talking about some guys to look out for. What I think is, is when you were coaching your last basketball game and I was in the bleachers and we got the notification that uh, Rios was a cub. Let's just say, I think we might remember that very fondly. Um, okay. Um, I love this list, Matthew. I agree with it fully. I have no changes. Um, uh, th th this is what it should be. I am really tired of Nick Madrigal. I watched every single uh, 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 at-bat this weekend from everybody except for Sunday's games. So, so mm -hmm. the two games Friday and Saturday, and I will draw my conclusions on that in a little while. Uh, but, but let's just say enough already. Okay. Enough already with Madrigal. Um, I, I'm not too upset about his air on Friday. That was a tricky play, but you know, in, unless the defense, it, it, the, the only way I see Madrigal making the team is if, and, and, and this is something that I'll trust David Ross and Jed Hoyer on over my eyes is if he is that much better of a defensive third baseman than, than the combination of wisdom, Rios, Morrell and Mastro Boney, um, because, Exactly. You know, it, 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 th they are predicating their team on defense. And if they don't feel fully comfortable with wisdom playing third every day and they really do like Madrigal, then OK, I could see that. But that's the only thing I'll say. So I, I'll say I agree with everything. Maybe Madrigal sneaks in. Who does he replace, though, if he sneaks in is the question. It's either Morrell or Mastroboni. And, and like I said, I think Morrell is as good as he's been this spring is still striking out at a level that's unplayable every day. Um, I believe his strikeout rate is, 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 is still over 46% currently yeah. right now. It's, it's just unplayable, but for a bench piece, when you need a little pop late and a guy with versatility, I would think he has more value than magical again, unless we're talking about, we really don't feel great about wisdom at third. We really don't feel great about master Boney at third. We really don't feel great about, uh, Rios at third. We need we need somebody steady there late in the games because that's how we're going to win. And then that's it. So 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 in terms of position players, it's 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 a three man race at this point. I agree. McKinstry's done. Uh, <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> it, it's a three man race between Mastroboni, Morell, and Madrigal for for two spots. Right. Yes. Absolutely. And I think you're going to see Rios and Wisdom at third. Wisdom Mancini, Morell and Wright. And it's going to change every day. So the bullpen here, you know, there's been a lot of breakdowns and, and, and narratives over the last week. And, and, and finally, some clarity about Keegan Thompson and Brandon Hughes. And the latest word is that, you know, Keegan Thompson, while he had a velocity drop, is 100% healthy. Brandon Hughes is not healthy. He's had several knee issues. Yeah. Um, again, Sahadev, he's the most cited reporter easily on this show. He's reported that Brandon Hughes, as recently as last week, had fluid drained from his knee. No, he is scheduled good. to pitch in the spring training game on Monday, but he's not on this team, I don't think. Um, it would have to take a miracle for him to make this team at this point. At this point. I think Thompson, being healthy, unfortunately, cannot go the multi-innings if right now but I think he could get there. And yeah. so for now, your multi-inning guys are Assad and Alzali. You have Keegan Thompson being more of a one-inning guy because despite his drops, he's been excellent. So what is he going to do in Des Moines? Um, so I think you see him make it after all. Um, I think it would be a little bit of a risk with Hughes going to the IL, not having any lefties, even though lighter is a matchup lefty, and I have him making the team along with, with Julian Merriweather for those last couple spots. Yep. Um, so I do have Ryan Barucki, uh, Mundelein, uh, Mustang, uh, making the team as the he's, lefty. He's throwing well. Yeah, he's throwing well. So that's my pen. We know about the rotation now. Uh, Wisniewski was officially named the fifth starter on Saturday. And he might uh, so be the that's, second that's what starter. I have for arms. He might be the second best starter on this team. He might be the best starter on this team. And, and, and real quick on Wisniewski, I got a couple texts about this yesterday. Folks, when we 
when we went live during the Efros trade, if you really watched that live, it was about 10 minutes of being depressed because I really like Scott Efros and then immediately switched into this deal makes sense. Got a lot of texts yesterday, Matt, saying, man, Sam, you, you know, was Nesky Efros, you were really were down on that deal. No, I wasn't. Okay. No, I wasn't. I I, I just like Scott Efros. Check the tape. Yeah, check the tape. My, we, we, we went live. We really like that Frost as fans. Who yeah. didn't? And we we went live 10 minutes after the announcement. You know, sometimes you got right. you have your instant reaction, and then you have a second to dissect. Um, yeah, I agree. I mean, the bullpen stuff's not as important to me because it's so fluid. Um, you know, the, 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 they move those guys quickly. I, the only thing I slightly disagree with is, like, to me, if Thompson's not going to be a multi-inning guy, I'd like him to get there and then come up. I, I don't love okay. him as a one. In, I, I don't love him as a one-inning guy. That's not his value to me. Um, but we'll see. We'll see how they use him. It'll be. You'll find out. My guess is, if all goes well, you won't see those guys on Thursday. It's going to be six innings for Stroman, and then you're going to go maybe because again, I don't think Ozla is a big multi-inning guy candidate either. I, 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 I'm I the opposite. I like Keegan multi-inning, us, uh, uh, Owls like coming in max uh, uh, for one right. inning, throwing 98, 99. But I think you'll see Stroman go six, and then you'll see somebody in the seventh, and then Fulmer, Boxberger, or Boxberger, Fulmer, if all goes according to plan. And then right. on Saturday, that's when you'll see, I believe, we don't know if it's going to be Steele or Tyone yet. We don't, but, no. Uh, assuming it's Steele, because they'll want to go ready, lefty, ready. That you know, Steele's not going six, most likely. Um, so that'll be the day you find out who's that first multi-inning guy in line. Will it be Assad or or somebody else? So Saturday will be when, when, when those answers, uh, those questions get answered uh, from that. But I wouldn't overreact to the bullpen. It'll change a hundred times over the course of the year. Uh, just get get these guys healthy. I still think Hughes could be a big part of this pen, and and, and there's no weak links in that pen. By the way, I, I don't see anybody out there that I'm like, well, that's the guy you put in when we're down nine, nothing in the fourth. That's a strong group, right, right. It's a strong it group of guys with a lot of depth and guys at the triple A level. You'll see Cam Sanders pitch at this level at some point this year. Right. Estrada uh, birdie. No, there's, no, there's, there, there, there's a lot of, a lot of pieces. And, uh, and so in this scenario, just to, to make sure we're all clear here, uh, and, and make sure we're thorough. So I have Zach McKinstry. I, I don't really care what happens with him. Probably waivers. <laughs> and then Rowan Wick. I think and by the way, going to pass him through waivers. And by the way, in hindsight, I, and it's not official yet, but if if McKinstry is gone, that was a really bad deal by the Cubs. Like you got you got to call it. It's Chris Martin was a very valuable piece and a very important player for the Dodgers. Um, and just sign a big deal with the Red Sox. Yeah, yeah. You, you, you could have gotten more. You could have gotten somebody to really help your roster. And instead, you just kind of got another. And I, by the way, this was one I was excited about because I thought he had big league ability. Um, and you ended up just getting basically a lefty Madrigal. I mean, I was yeah, just a really disappointing. Thing. So you have Madrigal yeah. starting at, at in, in in Iowa. Yeah, at the three A level. Yeah. 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 He so can, he, he can could have fun down there. Yeah, with, he could uh, stay there. Yeah. You know, the icon. So, <laughs> all right. Well, coming up next, we're going to get to our weekend observations from the final spring. weekend of spring training. Uh, we're going to do that coming up next. Today's episode is brought to you by Built Bar. The Built March Madness bracket is here as March Madness men's and women's uh, exit their Elite Eight games and set up the semifinals in the Final Four. Now you can make it count to vote for your favorite bar or puff at Built Bar. Go to BuiltMarchMadness.com to vote for your favorites. I'll be voting for the Cookies and Cream Bar. And if you want your team to win in hoops, you'll be voting for that uh, bar as well. Support your team, support your bar or puff. And when you vote for your favorite bar or puff, you'll be entered into a drawing where 50 lucky lockdown listeners will get a free box of Built. Not only that, but one additional fan will win a 12-month subscription to Built to have Built's best bars or puffs delivered monthly straight to your door. You got to try Built. It's the best protein bar ever. They're so amazing. You won't even think they're good for you. And uh, they really are, including 17 grams of protein to help you get through your day. BuiltMarchMadness.com. Vote for your favorite bar or puff and pick up a box while you're there. 
you can vote every day in March. So this is the last week. So hop in and support your pick over at Built Bar. Welcome back to Locked On Cubs. Thanks for making us your first listen every day. We also have our jersey giveaway going on between now and Thursday. In order to win a Cubs jersey of your choice, you need to follow and leave a five-star written review of the show on Apple Podcasts. So make sure uh, to take a minute or two and do that. When you're on our show page, make sure you click follow, then scroll down to the ratings and reviews, click write a review, give the show five stars, make a brief title, and in the review box, write something about the show and send that off. We've Been had great a ton so far. in our Been first great. week. Been great so far. Been great. Can't wait to buy some jerseys. Fantastic. And we're going to have a YouTube and Spotify promo oh, yeah. uh, soon as well. And that'll be attending a Wrigley Field baseball game. Just got to figure out when Oh, and my where. gosh. Wow. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just this little sneak peek. If you've listened okay. to this show this long, spoiler alert, you will I be like going it. to a Cub game courtesy of Lockdown Cub. What did you see this weekend, a Sam? Lot, because a spring lot. training is wrapping up. I saw a lot. I watched every at bat. I dissected everything like I was a scout. Um, look, I'll start with the not so good, then I'll get to the good. Sure. There's a lot, lot of good. Dansby Swanson's timing right now is extremely off. Um, it is not just a cold spell. There is something fundamentally off there now. He did say on the score on Friday on 670 that he knows his timing's off, that his timing has been off before, uh, and he is a notorious slow starter. So I think this is going to be one of those things the Cubs are just going to have to stay afloat in April till he figures it out because I would be very surprised at this point. I know this might startle you a little bit, Matt. I would be very surprised if he has a good April. I really would. I mean, he, he would have to turn it around very quick. Like, even his hits. He had, he had a hit the other day. It was an infield hit. Um, no hard contact. It's just his time, he's swinging at the right pitches. He's just off. Um, I've looked at the splits. He is not a good April performer. So okay. I, I think it's just one of those things where we're just going to have to just let's talk at the end of April and just say, okay, All right, I'll where is he that. at? Where, where Where is he? Just play good defense, and hopefully we can pick it up because there are other guys that are having great at-bats. I'd like to highlight Patrick Wisdom, who, you know, he's got that big knob, and that kind of helps him with bat control a little bit. He, he's put together good ABs. It's such a tough opening weekend for Wisdom because if I, yes. were to, if I were to pick three pitchers in the National League I don't want him to face, it might be these three. Um, you know, he, he ran into a homer last year against Burns, but, but Woodruff Burns Peralta is just not, it just doesn't match up with his profile. Well, so right. hopefully he could get a day or two off, survive that weekend. Cause if you remember last year, he got off to a terrible start. I, we, we were calling for him to be DFA going into Colorado and then he picked it up. So, yep. So, you know, hopefully we can, you know, you got to not overreact to these early couple of weeks, uh, for the good or the bad. Uh, but but I, I've liked his at-bats. I think Bellinger's hitting better than what his average says he's hitting. Is he in the lineup this afternoon? Yes. Yeah, I'd like to watch. I'm going to watch his ABs. He, he lined out a little bit like what I saw. And then the last thing I'll say is we'll find out really good Thursday afternoon how important spring is because if Marcus Stroman doesn't pitch well, then spring means nothing because he's been nothing short of pitch perfect so far this spring. He, he, he's had tons of movement, tons of command in the spring, in WBC. He looks locked in. I have my fantasy baseball draft Monday evening. He's somebody I'll be targeting because he just looks really good. And if he comes out, he just gets belted on Thursday. Then my lesson will be learned for next year that I'm just not even paying attention to spring because I'd be shocked if he doesn't perform well Thursday afternoon. He's been outstanding. So you know, pretty much good. I, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna be redundant. Magical McKinstry made that decision almost impossible. Both performing at just you know a, a, tr- a single A level offensively, and it's not just the results with Magical Matt. It's the at bats. He's striking out a decent amount. Check swing right. ground balls to first base. No hard contact whatsoever. It's it's troubling. Um, Master Boney continues to do well. He had a little bit of a rougher day Saturday, but but a good day Friday. And Rios, uh, you know, Rios isn't going to be a player that has multi-hit games, but when he gets hits, he gets them. And he's not looking overmatched at the plate, even against lefties. So I'm excited to see what he brings to the table. Again, 
we're facing the best pitcher in the National League or one of the sec- one of the two or three best on opening day and then one of the five or six best in day two. So I, I remember saying this on our old show last year, don't overreact, and it turned out to be funny because they won both games, but don't overreact. Like these guys are really tough. Let's give them a couple of weeks before we start drawing conclusions on where guys are at because that's that's a tough assignment to start your campaign. We will be live Central Standard Time, 7 p.m. Tuesday, 5 p.m. Thursday, and immediately after the final out on Saturday. So please join us live for those three shows. Our regular episodes uh, for Wednesday and Friday will be at those times, Tuesday and Thursday evening, plus a bonus show right after the final out on Saturday. If you are uh, somebody that watches the program, just make sure to go to the live tab uh, if you're not with this live so you can catch that or rewatch uh, on demand. And be sure to hit that subscribe button for Locked On Cubs on YouTube and smash the like button for all your favorite Locked On Cubs content, Apple, Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts. And we have our text and voicemail line, 312 834 4634. He's Sam Olber. I'm Matt Cozy. This is Locked on Cubs.